Hello, Stevie. Long time no speak. Everything good? Yeah, good, man. Thank you so much oh, for yeah. coming. Appreciate it. Uh, have a seat. The pride of Scotland. I was trying to, uh, did I pronounce Kirkcaldy Fife? Kirkcaldy. Kirkcaldy yeah. Fife. Yeah. What is Fife? Is that like the town? Fife, yeah. So it's a town. It's like in between, it's close to Edinburgh. Edinburgh, okay. Yeah, yeah. How's life? Yeah, good. Yeah. You had that crazy Very submission? Well. Yeah. I mean, your story is amazing, and uh, it's it's great to be able to catch up. But we you know we've talked in the past about you know the ups and downs and everything. Longtime UFC fighter, didn't fight for three years. You you uh, you actually announced your retirement. You had the knee injury, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe you were in your car when you announced it on one on one particular Facebook Live session. You seemed I, I rewatched it yesterday, yep. and like the frustration on your face was uh, was palpable. But then you get this opportunity with PFL. And that's earlier this year, and everything has changed for you. First fight didn't go your way, but the last fight certainly did. Yep. How did the whole PF like? How did they get you out of retirement and get you back on track here? So after the whole thing, you know, with the UFC, because um, obviously I left the UFC on the biggest win of my career. I would say um, at the, at the time when I beat Michael Johnson, I signed a new four fight deal. Um, you signed the four fight deal after the win. Yeah, after the win. right. Yeah, so, so you're thinking a, like I signed a new four fight deal after that uh, fight. Yeah, um, and then I was scheduled to fight Mark Diacase in London, but I then yeah I had to pull out. Um, so I pulled out. I think for the first time in my career um, due to the knee injury, and this had been going on. I mean, I had problems even before the Johnson fight of this knee injury. Um, so yeah, I pulled out the fight, and then the whole show ended up getting cancelled because this is March twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, then I remember, um, you know, that whole process where it was all a bit confusing. I wasn't sure what was going on. My manager was saying um, maybe a bit signing elsewhere and and stuff. Um, and then yeah, like you know, when I when I went as a free agent um, at the time. I uh, emotionally retired. So when I retired, I was never like, you know, set in stone and retired. And I think I was just emotional. Okay. Um, I had just left the UFC. I was a bit depressed, maybe. But why did um, you leave if you just signed a new four fight deal? Uh, well, that was just the the agree. So Ali said to me that. Um, uh, it was because of my knee, basically. So okay. because. The the doctor, it was it was really confusing at the time. I wasn't really sure what was happening. Um, there was talks of signing elsewhere, and I I said that I didn't really want to because I had a I had a deal with the UFC. Um, but um, yeah, to to be honest, my knee was bad at the time. I f from what I've heard, the UFC didn't see it as a quick fix. Uh, there was no like quick term. Um, and the doctor, I uh, can't remember his name, but one of the doctors at the UFC said that um, it wouldn't be like a a quick fix, that I, I shouldn't fight with money, basically. Um, so what them, was the issue? Uh, it's just cartilage. Just okay. like, yeah, just the Painful? fact that, yeah, just arthritis, like bone on bone, kind of something that's like, you kind of get a surgery and get fixed. Um, so yeah, um, so there was then the talks of going as a free agent, but it was COVID at the time as well. You know, there wasn't going to be promotions taken on. Um, so that happened and then, yeah, and then just my knee was bad at the time as well. You know, it was bad and I was just like, I remember just being emotional. I was just like, you know what, fuck this, I'm done with MMA. Because as most people know, the amount of, you know, sacrifice and the years that you have to put in um to get to the top and then I got to the top and then what happened on the biggest win in my career or after that and it was just like my life just came crashing down um and it almost feel felt unfair to me you know but I know life can be unfair sometimes but yeah it is what it is um and then it wasn't until a wee while after that I was like shit what, what am I gonna do with my life now wow you didn't have like, anything set up. Yeah, because I'm, just, uh, you know, my, it was like my career was over. Right. Was, uh, you know, How old were you? I, I've tried to point? explain it to some people. It's like, it's like imagine, 
the whole the only thing you've done in your whole life you've then you're then told you can't do it anymore it's right. like, what do you do um so yeah emotionally retired and then then i'm like what am i gonna do now uh, and then i realized that you know i do still want to fight and uh yeah but what, what so you were so right now you're 32 so you what were you like 30 yeah i would have been so it was just after that's a Johnson. scary thought right yeah, start you have kids start of covid right yeah. And you're like, what do you, you had n nothing set up for the future. Yeah, well, I, I've kind of got my own gym at home, so I probably would have went down that line. Because um, after the Paul Felder fight, when, you know, I rest, I went on a kind of free agency um, after I lost to Paul Felder in Glasgow, I started doing a bit of coaching, and then I've built up uh, my gym at home, Braveheart MMA, and it really took off quick. So, yeah, for the last, since then, I've been coaching and uh, fighting as well, which is uh, yeah, it's been really tough, tough thing, but, right? Yeah, but when I'm fighting, I, I I've now built up a a good enough team where I've got uh, some some really good guys where um, I just get them to handle it. You know, I've got guys taking the Braveheart MMA classes, and I just go and focus on the gym. So I'm staying at higher level MMA in Bathgate, and I and I stay in the gym. Um, there because they've got like you know beds and kitchen and right. all that um so i can focus so then you yeah. get this opportunity with pfl big time promotion yep what was it like when you got that contract they're like all right i'm back you know there's the promise of the million dollars you had these feelings fmma i'm done with this you get you know covid unfair bad luck whatever you want to say but now you have this opportunity like when you got that because you know there's a chance you could say hey i'm back no one's offering you a deal, right? Or maybe you're getting a small time local show deal or something like that. So when you got that initially earlier this year or late last year, what was that like for you? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's like the highs, highest to highs, lowest to lows. And then it wasn't the best time either, like I said, because of COVID. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be, you know, shows were getting canceled. I mean, that was now a, a thing that was really used to happening. Like UFC canceled their whole show and... Um, and yeah, so that's probably why it took a lot longer for me to get back fighting. But uh, yeah, my manager Ali, uh, he, again, came to the the rescue, and um, he uh, said, you know, I've got you, you know, a, an opportunity with the PFL. Um, so yeah, that pretty much how that came about. I, I was always waiting anyway. Um, I, I figured out, like I said, pretty quickly after. Um, I retired that I wanted to fight again. It just took so long because of COVID. So if not for COVID, you would have been back sooner. Yeah. yeah okay. You're, like, yeah. And how was I was knee? always training still. So okay. It's not like I took this big long time off. I was still training, but obviously I had the ring rust because I hadn't fought in two and a half years when I fought Martinez. Right. And uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if I really believed in ring rust, but and then when I, you know, when I was in there against Martinez, you know, it did feel a bit different. I'm like, oh, this. Even just cutting weight after two and a half years, I'm like, I remember how miserable it is. Right. Um, you know, having to watch your calories and all that stuff again. But uh, yeah, I got that one out of the way, and then obviously um, got the big one, the last one. How was the knee? So the knee is completely uh, healed. It's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't limit you. Doesn't give you problems. Uh, not recently. Okay. Um, so for the past maybe a year, it's been great. Probably not compared to a completely healthy normal knee, but nowhere near uh, what it was even before the Johnson fight. Um, because, I, I mean, I fought just in a yare with, with a bad knee. Um, I remember having to go swimming a lot, you know, so I wasn't running or making it worse. Um the Johnson fight, the the Cajun Johnson fight, like so many fights, I fought with bad knees, um, and yeah, now my knee, so uh, some rehab and a lot to do with yoga. Uh, mm. I do I do Bikram yoga um, every every week, at least once a week. But that is just completely f fixed and healed my knees. Really? Uh, yeah, because it was kind of hot, both of them. sweaty. Like, how hot does it get in that room? Uh, 40 degrees. Wow. So 40 degrees, it's 90 minutes. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's tough. Like, anybody that... So, Bikram yoga is, I feel, especially the 90-minute Bikram yoga, it's so different to other yogas. I mean, it's... You're getting a really hard workout, 
uh, like it's tough. I've brought some of my training partners there for the first time, and they've had to sit out. Um, really? Yeah, like twenty to thirty minutes before the end. Uh, maybe I make sure of like the heat and the, you know how tough it is. Um, but uh, but yeah, so um, you're you're getting like heat acclimation, so that uh, getting good mobility. You're getting a workout. Um, yeah. It has changed you. Okay, so you come back. It doesn't go your way in the first fight, but then you were fighting Anthony Pettis, legend, former UFC champion, and you submit him with the. Would you call it a body triangle? Because even he said it was like there's there's elements of the twister in there as well. Yep. well. What would you call that? So I would call it a modified twister. Modified twister. Yeah. This is something you've actively worked on. Yeah. So there's a picture of it right over there. <laughs> uh, I can't show the footage, but uh, yeah. I so mean that thing is brutal. I mean, I'll try and explain it. Please. Um, and the first time someone ever hit it on me, it was at Extreme Coutures in okay. Vegas. Some guy I was rolling with, um, I'd done the same thing as Pettis did. So somebody's on my back, body triangle, legs on the inside. It's MMA sparring, so I've turned to get up and guard. And then all of a sudden, I'm tapping because the horrendous pain in my spine. And then I asked the guy after it, uh, he had longer hair, I'm sure. Um, a thin guy with long hair. But uh, yeah, I said, what was that? And he, he was just saying it was a type of twister. Um, so yeah, I basically stole it from him. Wow. Um, and and in terms of like applying it, so obviously you have the, the body triangle locked in and you're pressing, like it, it should hurt your ribs, right? That's what Anthony so, said. So yeah, it can hurt your ribs, and it, but it's kind of the spine as well. So you got to think like, what is a twister? It's, it's twisting the spine, and um, Damn. and then when, when I've got the the body triangle with the leg on the inside, because I've not got the body triangle just completely on his back, like trying to get a rear naked choke. It's almost like I'm side on, um, a little bit. Like I've I've allowed them to shrimp. I've got my leg hooking the inside rather than the outside leg as the inside leg, um, and I'm keeping his lower body in this case because the way it was to the right and then when he's turned up on top his upper body is turned so his upper spine is turned to the left his lower body or lower spine is still facing the right because of the lock I've got on his lower spine Wow. and the inside control and then uh, and then yeah then I'm extending as well to also stretch but there's the twist and the stretch and uh, Jeez, yeah so you, did you plan on this like what at what point do you realize I can hit this? Is this so, something that you felt that you could get? Because Pettis mentioned in the Poirier fight, you know, his 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 ribs were compromised. Different yep. move completely. But like, yep. did you feel like this was something that would be open to you, or is it just something that happens in the flow of the fight? So the one in the Poirier fight, that was more an accident where he injured it. Uh, whereas when I had done it, uh, that was like the only reason he got up on top of me is because I allowed him. Mm -hmm. I allowed him to turn up on top. And and everybody thought, you know, Pettis is, oh, well done, he's turned up. But no, that was because I allowed him and then submitted him. But um, yeah, I've landed that. I mean, all my training partners watching it were probably knowing exactly. One of my teammates, Kieran, um, had sent me videos of a... So I, I'd already watched the footage. I knew that he escaped the back that way anyway, but... Kieran said to me, he sent me a couple of videos and he's like, by the way, you could totally hit that twister that you do to everybody in the gym. Because um, I land it a lot in the gym, obviously a lot more careful, but he's like, you'll be able to pull off that twister if you get his back. Um, and yeah, then just when I got the back, I knew that he would uh, try and do that. And he actually posted that. But I know he thinks that maybe him posting the video a couple of days before that that's maybe why he got caught but you know I was I'd already studied him and but yeah he posted a couple of days before it saying it it works every time he put the clip up of him escaping and said it works every time uh -huh. but uh, but yeah I was going to be doing it anyway regardless and could you even describe after everything you had been through to get a win like that that kind of sub against a guy like Pettis, what did that feel like seconds after when you were? Yeah, uh, well, you could see it. You could see it in the video, like yeah. a stand up. I'm, I'm almost in a bit like, even though I, I was confident. I mean, in the interviews I said before it, I'm like, I, I believe I'll stop him uh, within two rounds. I, I'm sure I said, um, 
And yeah, and I did, and so I, I was confident, but it was almost in disbelief, you know, that I'd just pulled it off. I managed to pull off the kind of submission that not a lot of people knew what it was, and uh, yeah, it was just unreal. I've landed that before as well, by the way, I, I, on you know the grappling show Polaris. Yes. So I, I submitted a guy, Craig Yours, um, slightly different because Craig Yours didn't turn up on top of me. Um, I've more forced it, so it was more like the traditional way of hitting the twister, but still with the body lock. Mm -hmm. um, That's where you competed against Patty, right? Yeah, Polaris. yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my Patty, with the... isn't that crazy now? Patty's become this huge name. Yeah, yeah. A few years ago, like no one's talking about him. You know, they're, in Europe they're talking about him, but now he's become this gigantic yeah, he was, star. He, he always had like the same. He always had that kind of big hype about him in Europe, but yeah, yeah. now obviously he's. Uh, you know, free and all in the UFC, and he's kind of went mega worldwide. Does it surprise you? Uh, not really, to be honest, because he's, you can tell he's got that type of personality, you mm -hmm. know, kind of like McGregor, like polarizing. He's, uh, you know, so many people hate him and so many people love him. Um, and, you know, you're either watching him because you want to see him get knocked out or because or you want to see him do well, so... I mean, that that's what it's all about. He, he's getting, regardless if you love him or hate him, he's making you want to tune in. Mm -hmm. So um, we just we just spoke to Anthony uh, before, and I know he's done media and stuff. And, you know, I, he's not dismissive of the loss, obviously. He gives you credit, but he did say that, you know, the fight didn't really mean anything to him. He was kind of looking past it because he already knew that he was in the the, the, the playoffs, the yep. semifinals. He had the, 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 the full points from the finish in the previous fight. You've obviously, I'm assuming, have heard some of the things that he said. Do you feel like he is not giving you, you know, full props for this? What do you think of what he's saying uh, about the last fight? Yeah, so he's obviously saying that to try and reassure himself, I think, and, and you know, whether he believes it fully or not. I mean, when you're in a kit, when you're in the octagon um, or, or um, you know, in a fight with another guy, it doesn't matter what the... Um, <laughs> the circumstances are you're trying to win right because like, he was saying he was playing it safe maybe he was playing it a little bit safe but he was still hitting me with you know he was still trying to finish me he was hit hitting me with everything he had um, and I was still pushing forward I feel like even before you know the the submission that um, it wasn't going as well as he's making out as it, as it was I mean I feel the first round was pretty close um, he landed some decent stuff I landed some good shots. I was forward pressuring, um, and then obviously, if I didn't get the submission, I had his back, and I would have still been on his back. I only allowed him to come up into the guard, if you like, uh, because I'd done the submission. So I'd still be on his back with a body triangle, probably punching him in the face, <laughs> winning the second round. So, um, yeah, I mean, he, he's going to say obviously that he, he he makes some good points. Like uh, he was the one that initiated the the ground game. I mean, I, I went for a couple of takedowns, but I wasn't really, I wasn't too fussed about getting it down there. I mean, I was forward pressure and, uh, and looking to strike. A um, couple of takedown attempts from myself and same from him. He tried to trip me one time. Um, well, I know, so oh, kind of judo uh, uh, move. And yeah, then eventually the takedown that led to me being on his back and I kind of got my legs stuck. Um, I eventually got it out, but... Uh, but yeah, I think he's going to see on Friday that, you know, he, he's going to get some reminders that I'm here to fight. Um, and yeah, this time it's just a normal fight. We don't have to finish each other. We just need to win. But right. yeah, I think it's going to be the same outcome. What do you think the difference is between Anthony Pettis today and maybe five, six years ago? Uh, the big one. Uh, money. Money. Uh, I could be wrong, but... They're, they're supposedly a saying it's hard to get out of your bed and, and I love silk the sheets or, yeah. or something. Marvin Hagler said uh, it's hard to wake up at 4 a.m. to pound the pavement to go running when you're waking up in satin sheets. Yeah. So you think that has affected him? Yeah, I think so. And I, I, I don't think it, I mean, I think these people like to try and act like or convince themselves that it's not, but it's true. I mean, like Conor McGregor's, you, everybody could see it with McGregor as well. I mean, how hunk. It's like hunger, hungry, you know. Uh, 
I mean, he's he's already the rich. You can see it sitting here with his big gold chain and his watch. And he, um, you were did you uh, see when he, when he was? Yeah, here? yeah, I kind of seen a little bit. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Uh, just I, I never listened to the whole thing because I just got here, but I was tr trying to listen to a little bit. But I just think like you know what he's he's obviously trying to convince himself that he's maybe still as hungry. Maybe he is, uh, but he's already rich. Um, he's got so much other stuff going on. He's got a show next week. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously it's going to be distracting a little bit. I mean, you, I heard you asking how involved are you? And then he's like, I'm, he's been really involved. Right. And it's like, that's got to be a bit of a distraction for, for this. I mean, the only thing I've been focusing on for, for you know, the last few months or what feels like since January, because I've been on fight camp right. pretty much since then, um, is just this, fighting and that's it. And I think that sometimes is the difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, did you see what you got paid uh, fighting me? I mean, I'm no. What was I, this? I, it was seven fifty, right? Seven hundred and fifty k. And you got eighty. Yeah, I got forty and forty, so I got eighty. So you get the win and show model. He doesn't. Yeah, I'm not sure if he just got a flat rate. I don't know yeah. if he got more if he won. I think it. No, was he said flat rate. rate. Flat rate. But you have win and show. I don't yeah. like win and show. I think yeah. you guys deserve guaranteed. Yeah, this is probably. Crazy. Um, but I suppose I, I understand that and I get why he's, why he's getting paid more than me. He's but when you see, I mean, that's a big difference. Yeah, you yeah. You don't need me to tell well, you that. Now, well, now that I know, you know, how much they can pay. Yeah. Because I thought, you know, 40 and 40 is a lot of money, even to me. And, but I've got, you feel four, when you I've saw got that? four kids at home. Um, and uh, when I seen how much he was getting paid, I was just like, wow. Now I'm pissed? like... Nah, because it's one of those ones, like, just because I beat him doesn't mean I should get paid more than him. If he's selling, if he's making the PFL way more money than I am, mm. even though I beat him, then it doesn't mean that I should get paid the same. But if I, when I win on Friday, I've got two wins over him, I want a pay rise. Yes. That's for sure. Uh, well, first but, comes the million dollars, hopefully, well, yeah, after that, Yeah, right? that's it. That's the, the main focus is that. But and then, yeah, of course, then yeah. I'd like to get paid more. Per How big of a deal well. would that be for you? A million dollars in addition to what you're making, right? Yeah. So Considering how the last couple of years have gone, this is life-changing. Life Absolute life-changing, yeah. I mean, not a lot of people get a chance to win a million dollars, and, and it's over the space, of, you know, um, not that long, like within a year. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just crazy, especially when, like you said, when you look two two years ago that I thought everything was, you know, done. It's all like just a complete roller coaster of emotions, and and that's what MMA is at yeah. times. But you know, the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. I feel like you in particular. I mean, you have you've you've dealt with the full gamut. Yeah, well, retirement, thinking my career's over. Right. The the wins, the losses, the. Uh, the injuries, the losing, the kind of career with the UFC, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm trying not to think too much uh, of obviously the million dollars sure, because sure. even though I've said everything about Anthony, um, like I know he's going to come and bring it. He's no, he, you know, he, he's going to come. He's going to come and try and fight and win. Obviously, um, so I've got to just put all my focus on beating him again. Um, and then, yeah, then it's the the final. But um, any hard feelings towards the UFC for how it ended? Eh, sometimes, yeah. Like, but yeah, I kind of get, I get, I understand. Like, I understand it all. They're a business. Like then I said, I don't really understand it. How do you come off a win, sign a four fight deal, and, not, and get cut? I don't get that. Well, it's just what they, they so I spoke to Shelby after it because cause I, even before the PFL deal I asked, I was like, you know what, I do want to fight again. Sure. I asked if they would have me back and Sean actually said that they would. They, oh. would take, they would take me back if I could prove that my knees were better. So I think they wanted like a, so he actually said if you can prove that your knees are better or that you've had knee reconstruction. Um, so I said, I've not had knee reconstruction. I replied back to that email saying, I've not quite had knee reconstruction, but my knees are better. I've healed them, like the yoga and rehab has helped heal them. Um, and yeah, that was kind of the last we spoke and then the PFL thing happened. But I mean, if fighting three times in four months doesn't prove that sure. my knees are good, uh, because people don't understand how, how tough 
this format is as well with the PFL. Yeah. It's, it's as good as it is. It's like, you know, fight camp, a couple of days off or a week off. You're back. Fight camp. Yeah, I've been on fight camps for like <laughs> forever. Um, so, yeah, but obviously I'm happy with the PFL now. I've, I've, uh, I'm getting paid good per fight and I've got the chance to win a million dollars. Do you like the fact that it's, I mean, the, the, the fight with Anthony, the first one was, I think, June 24th. And so now here you are, early August. Not a lot of time for him to regroup. I feel I, from the outside looking, I feel like this this benefits you, right? Yeah. Get right back on there. He yeah, didn't. that's it. I think I think this benefits me more this time because I'm not even sure like why he ended up later because he was supposed to fight on PFL. Like when I fought Martinez, he was supposed to fight the same right. night. I think he got hurt or something. And then right? yeah, I heard rumors that he was struggling with making weight, or maybe oh, he was, my. or or maybe he was injured a little bit. Okay, but not too bad. Where. Not sure what happened, but then he was fighting uh, two weeks later because he was fighting Miles Price. Yeah. And I was speaking to Miles Price and he was not sure why they changed it either. Huh. Uh, we were speaking like through Instagram and um, and yeah, uh, so that got changed. And then because obviously he was then two weeks after us, um, when I fought him, uh, that was a week after the original other lightweights, um, but yeah, maybe karma. I don't know, but uh, it's no work to. I would say it would. It's worked to better for me because he looked like he. Well, he was injured. I, right. I know he said he wasn't, he, but he was obviously a bit injured after that fight. He's down holding his yeah, ribs, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I know how brutal that submission is. So he'll know. He'll know himself that for the first few weeks of this fight camp, he's probably have been sitting at home resting. You can't go straight into sparring hard and taking body shots and grappling and wrestling when I've just done what I've done sure. to his rib. And he'll know that in his head. And obviously, I remember listening to an interview he said before that confidence comes from, you know, your work ethic and how hard you've trained. He's going to be battling some uh, stuff in his mind when he walks out on Friday knowing that uh, he's not been able to do everything because he, he said I think it was an old interview before saying he's not held anything back like he was uh, for the last one the first one that I right. um, but even if you know even if he was I beat him completely healthy and sure. where he felt at his best the first fight you you so. listen to your opponent's interviews a lot? Uh, yeah I like to hear what they're saying yeah you, you gain insight uh, from this? yeah it's just like to I mean, peek it into their it mind, matter, but yeah, right. but just to see what they're. You watch their footage a lot. Uh, yeah, I like to. I like to go and kind of see what they're up to, and um, yeah. And yeah, he, he was awfully quiet the first few weeks of the fight camp. That's for sure. No, really, never really posted very much at all. Um, did you realize right away that you were going to fight him again based on the seedings? Uh, so I got told. Yeah, I think I got told just before uh, the fight that. If I won in the first round, um, within a certain amount of time, I think it meant I fought Olivia. Okay. Um, if if obviously I won by decision or or lost, I wouldn't be in the tournament. I had right. to stop him. Um, so it would have been a uh, Raush Manfield that that was fighting Pettis, I think. Yeah, there was a few different circumstances, but. Uh, yeah, I knew that it was going to be an immediate rematch. By the way, were you bummed at all? You know, they're going to Cardiff, they're going to London. I'm assuming you would have liked to fight closer to home, right? I mean, yeah. MSG is cool. You know, New York City, it's Pettis, but would you have preferred to be on one of those? Uh, probably not, to be honest. I mean, really? Just because, like, whenever am I going to get a chance to fight in Madison Square Garden main event? Yeah. So, yeah, it would have been cool to fight on the London card for my fans, um, like a lot of people would have made it down, but um, yeah, it's just so cool to fight in New York. Here, yeah. I know I'm going to be walking out and getting booed maybe again, and you know he'll because the last time I was a wee bit unexpected that because uh, I didn't think there would be much fans, but he got quite a good cheer, and I got maybe a few boos. Um, so yeah, I'm expecting that again and uh, on Friday. But well, I'm looking uh, forward to it. Great to catch up with you. Uh, welcome back. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, that's, I mean, I, I feel like come December, we're going to be talking about that finish as one of the subs of the year. 
Uh, there's a few in the running right now, but I think you're at the very top of the list, no doubt about it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you uh, what you do on Friday. You're the favorite, the betting favorite going into this fight against Anthony Pettis. Yeah, Who would have thought, huh? Yeah, they're giving me some respect. Now. Imagine yeah, yeah. that. Two uh, years out of the game, two and a half years out of the game, now you're getting some respect. That's up. Well done, Stevie. Thank you so thank much. You, I appreciate you coming in. Yep. All the best to you. Good luck, and uh, thank you for doing this before the weigh-ins as well. Thanks, buddy. All right, there he is, Stevie Ray, the, the pride of Scotland. Joel will walk you out right over there, so all the best. And uh, you can see yeah. Stevie uh, fight uh, Anthony Pettis this Friday on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus.